Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing front brakes on a 2004 Honda Pilot and their disc brakes. It's pretty much similar to any other car when you're doing front brakes uh, and their discs. Pretty simple, quick, as long as you're not changing the rotors or the calipers. If your car is, is stopping straight, it's not pulling to either side, and it's just maybe got that squeak, that's that little feeler that's telling you the brakes are gonna go soon. Change them then, and you won't have to change the rotors or the calipers, all right? Just the pads, and that's what we're gonna do today. So, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna jack it up in a safe spot and take the wheel off. Just make sure you're either on a chassis or a nice strong spot under the car when you jack it up. Okay, so there's two bolts holding on the caliper. Yeah, these brakes are pretty shot. Heard it squeaking. Rotors aren't bad. I'll get my tools and I'll take this off. I'm gonna put a safety jack underneath just in case the other jack lets go. Very safe not to have it. That's it. Two bolts. We'll get you guys a little closer. That's the two bolts that hold in the caliper. And then the caliper should slide right off. So there's your caliper. And you got your brake pads on each side. As you break as you can see they were pretty thin. Just about ready. That's the back one. This is the little feeler right here. That starts to scrape when they're too low. They got some new Duralast pads. These are ceramic pads. I always get the cheapest ones as long as they're ceramic. Because the only extra you're paying when you pay more money for brake pads is a warranty. And the warranty doesn't say anything about wear. It's only about defects. And there's really nothing to be a defect on a brake pad unless it, uh, the glue on the back comes out. Which is I've never seen in my life. So I just get the cheapest ones. Alright. Now when you do it, you have to, you have to take the caliper here right and you have to push this piston back to make room for the new pads because they have more meat on them when you do that when you push this back in you need to open your hood and take the top off of your um, master cylinder because the back pressure could blow a line if you don't have the top open so always open the top all right, I'm gonna do that now. Okay, this is it right here. So it's gonna pop it open, just to let it breathe. What would we do back pressure? Okay, so in order to compress the piston, 
right here. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys to see it. This piston right here has to be pushed in. And what I usually do is take one of the old brake pads, put it against it with a clamp. I gotta put the clamp. Right? Put the clamp across like this. See that? Okay. And now we'll compress it. And when you compress it, it pushes the brake fluid back into the master cylinder. And that's why we had to relieve pressure. Okay. Goes in nice and easy when there's no back pressure. Okay, there it is. It's pushed all the way back. Now we can take this back off. Take the old pad back off. And we'll put the new pads on. I'm gonna put some anti-squeak stuff. I'll show you that also. Okay. You got this here. Disc brake quiet. So if you ever hear cars squeaking when they hit the brakes, it's because they don't use this. Um, the new pads come with a, a backing on them so they're not supposed to squeak, but they still squeak. So, we're gonna put a little of this stuff on there. It's kind of like a rubber, rubberized stuff that is okay with heat. So you put a little bit Squeak it around a little bit there. Right. Put some on the other pad as well. That. And we'll put the pads back on this side down here. I'll show you that. I got a bad angle for that. So I put this one back, this one with the feeler goes in the back side, both pads are in, show you that, back one. Okay, the ceramic is both going in. That should probably go unsaid, but you know, you never know. The metal part is on the outside. Okay, with the anti-squeak. So now when we take this caliper, and we put this caliper back on, it should slide right on. hard with one hand okay so now I'm gonna put it on I couldn't do it with one hand should slide right in like so
get your two bolts, put them back. Okay, the other one, tighten them back up. Snug them up. And that's it, those pads are changed. Put the tire back and we'll go to the other side. Okay. And we'll let it down and do the other side. All right, so I got it jacked up and we'll do this side. I usually lay the tire down in front of it so I can sit on it. finishing it really should dry a little bit before you drive the car that's one there's the other one okay and they squeak I forgot to mention that there's also these little guys right here where the bolts screw into. If you just push on them, don't push in because they go out slowly as the brakes wear and everything adjusts. So you can see these little ridges in here. Get that out of the way. These little ridges, you just push them in, which I just did. Top and bottom. And now we'll compress the caliper. C-clamp. The old brake pad. back remember all that brake fluid that was in here is pushing back into the master cylinder very easily so we don't blow any lines that's it Okay. 
and put back the caliper. Okay. Put the two bolts back. Tightened up, and we'll put the wheel back, and that's it. Pretty simple, doing front brake pads. So don't let anybody fool you. Shouldn't cost you 400. I think the pads were like uh, 29 bucks, right? And that's probably an expensive set for this uh, Honda Pilot. Usually even cheaper. And ceramic. Take the safety out. The jack stand. Tie it back. When you put the lugs back, try to go all around side to side so the wheel goes on straight. Make sure it sits, sits right. Keep going across until it snugs up. And then tighten it. All right, so that was a brake job on a 2004 Honda Pilot. I would have take maybe half an hour, all right? So DIY it. All right, guys, that was a brake job on a 2004 Honda Pilot front disc brakes pretty much the same for any car it's uh it's pretty easy don't let it scare you if you got some simple tools a c-clamp you can do it i'm going to clean up now make sure that you put your uh master cylinder cap back on you don't want to leave that off while you're driving make sure that's back on and when you start the car for the first time after changing the brakes pump the brakes a few times make sure the pedal comes back up you don't want to put it in reverse and roll out of the driveway all right so in order to do that brake job I'll show you the tools I used. Pretty simple. You had your brake pads. I used a four-way lug wrench. I used that disc brake quiet by CRC. I used a C-clamp. I used a socket set, but basically only had to use the 12 millimeter socket only. Safety jack stand and this jack to jack up the car. So basic stuff, I mean if you don't have that jack, you can always use your jack that comes with the car, the little scissor jack, or maybe you have a bottle jack if it's like a Jeep or something like that, or a pickup, but that's it. That's all you need. You can do it yourself. So what's in your garage today? I want to show you guys just a few of my toys that are hanging up in here. A lot of car memorabilia kind of stuff. I'm just going to scan it. Give you guys a, just a little look of what's in here over the years. It's probably, you know, 20, 30 years of collecting in here. On the wall. I know I got to neaten it up, but uh, here it is. You got a Hulk model I never made on the wall. This is like a little showcase with some Hot Wheels in it. That's Crystal and Alyssa. When she was little, if you can see that. Sixty-five Pontiac GTO still in the box. Another little showcase right here. I used to collect vans only, so this was my little van collection. Up here is a shelf that had some other stuff, some other toys, some stuff in the background. So you can see a Frankenstein back there. Another van. Lots of miscellaneous stuff. There's another little showcase. This has some older ones in there. There's a Muhammad Ali figure back there still in the box. It's 
to old karate men. I don't know if anyone knows what those were back in the day from Aurora. You know, Doom Buggy, Wizard of Oz lunchbox. <laughs> He's an old Tonka Dune Buggy. I don't know when that's from. I don't know, maybe the 70s. Little Hess truck. Then I got two big showcases down here. It's a whole showcase full of stuff, either opened or not. If anybody's interested in what something is, let me know and I'll next video I'll pinpoint and take it out of the showcase and show you what it was. Some of it's just been here for years. I'm sure everybody knows that robot from Lost in Space. Another showcase. There's a dune buggy down there. I didn't realize I had. Again, old petty collection down there. Mad Mag it looks like a Mad Magazine doll down there. I didn't realize I had that either. Some little robots. Fifty four Chevy models. Looks like a Dale Earnhardt clock. I got an old Harley Davidson collector set back there. Some awards. Coca Cola bank in the box. This little Uncle Sam bank. That's an oldie. Looks like I got another model back there of uh, Thor. Yeah. Two old models I never put together. Cores. Looks like one's Cores, one's Wrangler. Thunderbirds. Like a little Scooby Doo doing buggy back there. Some other Hot Wheels. American Graffiti. That's an, that's an old post office box with uh, a couple of things in there over my door of my garage. Alright, so that's it for uh, what's in your garage, toys in your garage. And uh, I'm sure I got boxes and boxes of, of other stuff up on the shelves that I didn't even open or haven't opened in years so maybe we'll uh investigate one of those boxes one day too as a uh, what's in your garage just so i can see what i even have myself i'm gonna have to start auctioning some of that stuff off on ebay because it takes up a lot of room and i really don't look at it but i'm sure it's worth something all right guys thanks for watching again and i'll see you next time